The Will You Grow Show goes live Sundays 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern. To receive notifications, click the subscribe button beneath this video or visit YouTube's Will You Grow channel to see more shows and videos. And now, here's Will You founder Angelique Meadow with this week's Will You Grow Show. Welcome to the Will You Grow Show. How are you? I'm Angelique, founder of Will You and WillYouGrow.com, an inspirational multimedia company that provides education and mentoring to nurture empowerment and joy. Our weekly grow show begins by tackling touchy subjects that'll tickle your tempestuous thoughts, fan your eternal flame, and salve your soul with hope. Halfway through, we'll take a 60-second look at what people have to say about us, and then we'll go hands-on to share tips and tools to begin implementing today's lesson into your life. Here in the studio with me today are our audio aficionado, Ben, <laughs> and our video Santa, Neil. Greetings. They help make this show happen while sharing their personal perspectives. This episode is sponsored by Life and Nature, who keep our hearts beating and our world turning, and by the Carrie Campbell Foundation, which supports creative video content that increases love among all people. Love that! We say thank you to the Carrie Campbell Foundation and each and every sponsor and donor. We'd also like to thank each and every viewer who hits the subscribe button and notification bell the like button, and the share button today. It helps the channel grow and it makes it easier for new people to find and watch our videos. Now, on to today's episode. The joy of being wrong. No matter how we play this game called life, most of us get a kick out of hearing, you're right, bingo, and you win. Yet, it's inevitable that we'll also hear the opposite, that we're off base, We've missed the mark and we are wrong. In today's episode, we're going to look at how to find the joy in being wrong. We've all been wrong, so we know how it feels. We might feel fear that we're going to be made fun of. We might feel regret that we made the wrong choice. We might feel anxiety that we're less than perfect. We might feel guilty that we should have known better. We're guilty that we spoke up at all. And our inner critic may run wild. The emotions we feel about being right or wrong may be very strong. For some people, the need to be right feels like survival. And the possibility of being wrong feels like a threat to their existence. Without wading too deeply into psychobabble, whenever others don't agree with this type of person, they feel attacked. In the minds of these people, who are sometimes called narcissists, being right means they are in control and powerful, and being wrong means they are weak, stupid, and vulnerable. Though it may appear ideal that these people would learn from this message, they would think that it challenges their rightness, which would only make them feel attacked, so they would criticize it and tune out. If any of us are dealing with one or more of these individuals, may we bless ourselves with the peace that comes by redirecting our energy elsewhere. Overall, our societal standards of being right and wrong are superficial and have been given too much power. The evidence of this is everywhere. As children, we may have been rewarded with attention, toys, fun, and things when we did what adults saw as right. When we did things that adults saw as wrong, we may have been punished. And since the adults were brought up similarly, their behavior may have seemed normal, so they may not have taken the time to question why they made those parenting choices. And on the surface, this behavior of rewarding right and punishing wrong may seem okay. However, regardless how we were raised or how we parent, I'm calling us to a higher level, a level that transcends right and wrong and fulfills the longing in our hearts. Because there is a deeper purpose than being right or wrong that has nothing to do with the surface comparison. 
the deeper purpose isn't about right and wrong at all. Because the purpose of being right is not to make us feel smart, and the purpose of being wrong is not to make us feel stupid. The deeper purpose of being right is to teach us to be better teachers. And the deeper purpose of being wrong is to teach us to learn. Both are a discovery process. When we focus on teaching or learning rather than comparing levels of smartness, then being right and wrong are no longer a factor, and we pull the blasted rug out from underneath our egos and become humble and teachable. When we know that we're either being given an opportunity to teach or learn, we will no longer feel badly when we are wrong or haughty when we are right. And if we want to give meaningful rewards, they could be based on the lesson of teaching or learning that we allowed ourselves to receive. And the reward could be some form of acknowledgement. Our capability to teach can always be tweaked. And so can our capacity to learn. It's a continual process. If we choose to focus on what we're learning, such as mathematics, knitting, patience, or getting to know about someone, being right or wrong about it becomes a non-issue. And this may give us a deep sense of relief, knowing that any burdens we carry about being wrong may be lightened or let go by accepting that we can choose to learn rather than choosing to be wrong. There are some choices that can act like landmines and blow up our chance to experience the joy in being wrong. So let's keep our eyes and heart open and notice if we are behaving in any of the following five ways. Number one, do we make the focus of being wrong all about us? Two, do we justify our mistake by saying that we were kidding or that we were wrong on purpose? Number three, do we lie by saying it was someone else's fault that we were wrong? Number four, do we apply toxic positivity and pretend that we're all good with being wrong? Number five, are we sinister, gaining pleasure from wrongdoings, harm, and misfortune? On the other hand, there are three direct steps that can help us to experience the joy of being wrong right away. Number one. Are we willing to accept that we are wrong? Number two, are we willing to learn? Number three, are we willing to change? This is ultimately what the people we've disrespected want. They don't want us to be sorry. They want change. Here's my perspective. Many times I have had the opportunity to grow through being wrong, and here's one example. For the first half of my life, I made decisions based on weighing pros and cons. At the time, I didn't realize that each of the choices I made through thinking and feeling the pros and cons resulted in circumstances that left me feeling trapped and stifled. It took a while for me to learn what was wrong with that behavior? When I accepted that little old me was wrong to think that wise decisions were made without intuition, I learned. When I accepted that this was wrong, that I am not limited by my experience of thinking, feeling, memory, also known as pros and cons, I opened up to the wisdom of life. I accepted that I was and am connected to a universal intelligence, which I call life or God, which has every answer I could ever need to make the very best right choices for each of my life's circumstances. And when I accepted that truth, I got right with life and God, and life appeared more right to me. This joy I now experience through my connection with life and God was born from being wrong. So I am thankful that life is such a patient teacher for me and that I humbled myself to admit and learn a better, wiser way to live. 
And now I'll turn it over to you to consider. I'll ask you a famous question. As the masked man in Princess Bride said, quote, What hideous sin have you committed lately? Unquote. However inconceivably wrong you may feel, instead of lashing out, feeling sorry for yourself, or blaming yourself or others for how you feel, instead, can you accept it? Can you find the joy-filled lesson and learn? While you think on that vital question, we'll take a quick break to see what people have to say about us. When we come back, we'll hear from the crew and talk tips, tools, and elements from Mother Nature to free ourselves to experience the joy of being wrong. The Will You Grow Show will now take 60 seconds to check in with you. If you're wondering how to apply a Grow Show topic to your life, here's what people say about mentoring with Angelique. I've told so many people about what I'm working on with you, and I, I don't know what we call you. I kind of call you a life coach slash spiritual leader slash friend who's just always there. You just walk with me through um, the progress that I'm making. And the one thing that you really taught me is how important it is to become our own best friend and to stop looking externally for validation and happiness and comfort and safety and find it within myself so that I can be by myself and not freak out. This is your girl. Um, <laughs> Self-care is not selfish. If you really want to dig deep and stop living on the surface, then schedule a conversation with Angelique. And now, back to the Will You Grow show with Will You founder, Angelique Meadow. Welcome back. Before we dive into tips and tools, let's see what the crew has to say about today's topic. This is an easy one for me. I'm married, so I've been celebrating the joy of being wrong for a long time. Yeah, I'm going to let Neil take this. I've never <laughs> been wrong before. So. Oh, baloney. You've been wrong. You're wrong right now. <laughs> so I used to do two and three a lot. But now, I'm fully admit when I'm wrong <laughs> and I celebrate, you know, I've got, oh, I'm wrong. Okay, fine. Sometimes I do. Not to, to Zoe, when I say that, when she tells me I'm wrong, I take that a little bit. I don't like being told I'm wrong by an 18 year old, <laughs> but, but then I come to terms with it. Yes, I'm wrong. You were right. Let's move on. That's, that's don't, more, don't want to dwell it's easier to respect. As, as the yes. other person, you know, because it gets obvious when someone the, doesn't really know. That's right. There. There's an old saying, be man enough. It's an old, old saying, but be man enough to admit you were wrong. This is better because you, that's how you, you're going to get to the truth. That's right. I don't know. I guess, but if, if someone really believes that they're right, then I guess... They're not going to be able to, <laughs> they're going to be like, well, I'm there. right all the time and click off. <laughs> anyway, see ya. <laughs> she hit the nail on the head with the, with narcissism, and that is textbook example of a, a narcissist being right all the time. This is an episode where you're going to have to show your friend that has this problem because they're <laughs> not going to want to click on it because no. they think that they're right. So yes. Actually, this is for the people who have to live with those people. Yeah. Exactly. It's good therapy for, people for the people who live with those people, because one can spend a lot of time and energy talking with someone who's really not interested in learning. They're just interested in being right. Just interested in being right and all the time. And what a horrible way to go through life. To each, opinion, to each their to each, own. To each their own. <laughs> to each. wife, blink twice if you need assistance. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a flag up the chimney. <laughs> so, especially if we think about the example you gave of your daughter. Mm -hmm. So you have gone from um, resisting, considering being wrong to admitting that you're wrong. Um, what about the step of learning? Whatever uh, lesson might come from that. What lesson have you learned, or are thinking about, or not thinking about? <laughs> I probably haven't learned much when she tells me I'm wrong. I'll just, I'll admit I'm wrong and then I'll go about my way because I don't want to dwell on it. But you're right. 
depending on what we're talking about and what I'm wrong about, then I should try to educate myself or listen to her and let hear her side of, of why I'm why she's right and I'm wrong. I think as she's getting now she's 18, she's getting a quasi adult, I can listen and try to learn from her about what she thinks is right and what I think is wrong and try to converse and come to a mutual. Is it embarrassment of the mistake or is it like a a pride injury? Probably a pride injury, which is sort of the same thing. It's sort of the same feeling, but not totally. I guess the older you get, the more you, I'm right about everything. (laughs) Or just year 12, you don't know. That's... Yes, and I've been guilty. But of maybe they I've do been, know. <laughs> they probably do. I've been guilty of that too. Yeah, and there are two ways that, you, that one could be thinking about right and wrong. It could mm-hmm. be about the topic. Let's say you think this shirt is white. I think it's cream. Okay. Okay. They can both be mm-hmm. right. That's yeah. Without that's either of them being subject, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, that's the that's the physical subject. But then you can think about the the lesson that goes along with. Why does it bother me that they think that the shirt is cream and I think that the shirt is white? Why does that bother me? Mm. That's the real lesson because that's the rub with probably more than one topic. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, most often it comes down to power. It's It feels like a threat of control oh. over the situation, over that the person, sense. over uh, not being respected, yeah. over... Something, something that has to do with power. So if we can um, really take a step back and look mm-hmm. at how is this threatening me or what I think me is <laughs> in this situation, like, for example, dad. Yeah. If I'm no longer dad, if I'm not right, then that's going to be problematic to how I see myself, and then I'm going to get upset about it. So those are two different lessons there that can be learned, but yeah. it's really important the way that you both have just talked about it. And Ben asks good questions, too, so that always helps. <laughs> and now, it's metaphysical tool time. Today's healing stone is Rainbow Moonstone. Ben, would you tell us about the Rainbow Moonstone? Absolutely. Absolutely. The following information is from the crystalcouncil.com. Rainbow Moonstone, also known as White Labradorite, is a variety of Labradorite that exhibits flashy colors and rainbows throughout. The name Rainbow Moonstone was coined by the lapidary in mineral communities to describe the stone even though it's not a moonstone. Rainbow Moonstone deposits can be found in Sri Lanka, Australia, Mexico, Madagascar, Poland, and India. Rainbow Moonstone's energies activate and align all our chakras to allow energy to flow freely. It's a very soothing stone with outputting vibrations full of calming and relaxing energy. This powerful crystal connects with one's emotional body and current mental state, and it's a powerful ally in helping maintain mental clarity and assists in shielding your aura from negative vibrations attempting to attach onto you. By helping keep your mind clear, you'll notice the passive ability of moonstones in general to raise one's awareness, intuitive, and intellectual levels. These attributes can then be used to help in any endeavor or desire you may have. This stone encourages one to take on new opportunities and be open to any new beginnings that may come your way. Rainbow Moonstone is a very effective transformational stone, and simply working with it for a short amount of time can produce opportunities in your life that can change you forever. Imagine yourself running on the cycle of the moon. Each month, the new moon starts off this endless cycle of growing until it's full, then radiating its bright light before slowly resetting itself and becoming another new moon. Imagine yourself embarking on a new opportunity with different intentions each month. You continue to grow, learn, and shine until you accomplish that desire, filling you with endless rays of joy and happiness. As you relish in this feeling, it soon begins the time for you to reset yourself once again and start a new set of goals. Simply carrying a piece of Rainbow Moonstone during this time will ease the stress, anxiety, and pressure of trying new things while helping one maintain a smooth transitional period. When meditating with the stone, we recommend using other transformative stones alongside it, such as Labradorite, Bumblebee Jasper, Aragonite, 
or Moldavite. All of these stones are extremely powerful and will push you to take a path in life full of your truest desires. These stones, combined with Rainbow Moonstone, help one openly express themselves and what they most yearn for in this world. Once one realizes they can create their own destiny, only then will they become unstoppable. Nice. Thank you very much, Ben. And today's healing animal is the raccoon. Neil, would you share with us about the raccoon? The following information about raccoons is from worldbirds.org. The raccoon symbolizes the human ego. It is the personal I whose objective is to claim its space in the outside world. What is the spiritual meaning of seeing a raccoon? Spiritually, a raccoon indicates that you need to observe your ego maturely and empathetically. Watch the games and habits of the raccoon and interpret the meanings to apply them to ways that your ego may be at play in your life. Is it stealing your happiness? Is it washing its hands of your deeper need to learn? and hissing or running away in fear of getting caught. Understand that the ego is not a monster. Rather, it is part of our consciousness and needs and deserves love. It also needs guidance from the inner consciousness, and that is up to you. Thank you, Neil. And today's healing flower is the magnolia. Is this not magnificent? This is a real bloom from outside. In that, that is huge. Isn't this? That thing is unbelievable. This is a beautiful real live magnolia. I'm so honored to be able to show her here for everyone to see as this is a beautiful flower of the Southern Hemisphere. The message behind the magnolia flower is to always be stable in life and to go through life with your head up high. As delicate as these flowers appear, they are actually quite strong. They also open their petals during the day and close them up at night. This reminds us to close up and hide our beautiful light when surrounded by the darkness of people who live in their egos, but to freely open up again when the light returns. The white petals of the magnolia represent the moon, and they are often associated with the lunar goddesses Selene and Artemis. If you'd like to assist yourself in letting go of egoic tendencies and experiencing more joy in life, whether you're right or wrong, consider meditating with a rainbow moonstone, watching a documentary about raccoons, and becoming absorbed in the succulent scent of magnolias during a nature walk, as they are now in full bloom here in the southern U.S. So what say ye? Please share your comments so we may grow and experience more joy and learning together. As always, we thank you for sharing time together with us. If you liked today's show, we'd be honored if you'd hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive updates when we make new videos. Hit the like button to let us know that you like what we're doing and hit the share button to share this message with the people that you care about. To see more of our videos, they're also available by clicking that green Will You button below this video and then scrolling down. If you'd like to talk with me about mentoring, feel free to schedule your complimentary conversation at willyougrow.com today, and I'll look forward to speaking with you soon. And for now, we bid you adieu. Take excellent care of your very fine self, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Always with love, from Angelique. Good job, guys. Yeah, right. Thank you. Woohoo! For more information about programs offered by Will You, Mentoring with Angelique, and to watch video success stories from clients, explore willyougrow.com. If you or your company are interested in inspiring our mutual audience by sponsoring this or another of our programs, let's talk about it. Boost viewer confidence and trust in your company. Call 1 833 Will You. Then press extension number six. Make sure to click the subscribe button to get reminders before upcoming shows.